All right. You all right? Can you hear me? Big pal. You're like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> There's a common dominator. Dominator? There's a common dom- dominator. I can't even say dominator. You're, what is you're it? a common dominator. Can, what you, is it? can you hear me? Denominator. What is it? Common denominator. What? Yes. Denominator, what? yes. Yeah, it's one of them. <laughs> so every time every time I sit at his laptop, he does something daft. And it just started then, but it's calmed down a bit now. So let's let's oh. just be happy with what it's doing right now. You're a shamble. How are you how are you alive in the modern world? How, how do you survive? <laughs> I don't understand. Not on Zoom, is it? Or on computers, I'll tell you oh. that. I can't I can't deal with it. Oh, it's bollocks. Oh, it's yeah. annoying, what you, man. It, it, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? You, what you think I'm going to tell you? We've still not got a sponsor, <laughs> so I'm not telling you. I'm not even going to show you the can in case the people watching recognise the can and go, becoming... we're getting the can on there for free. That's not happening. I'll let you listen to it open. I'll Ooh, let you listen I know, to it put. I know what that is from that from the opening noise. Uh, so this is like, name that tune. You've got to name that beer just from the sound and be put. Oh, oh, it's a green can. That now is it now. Oh, don't give it away! <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, well, you I... see... I am, that oh, that's oh, flake. It's a bit heady. It's a bit heady. It's a bit heady. I am. I am going to name mine because I. What? I, I'm going to turn. I'm, keep what? my voice down in case in case she's off tonight. But every time I come to America, my missus is so sweet. She doesn't really drink, um, and Americans tend not to really drink in the same way um, Brits do because Brits we love a drink, and. Um, so every time I come over, she's always got me like a selection of craft beers because it's a lovely gesture. She's so sweet. She gets me this selection of like six craft beers. She's like, welcome back to America. I got you some beers. And I'm like, oh, are they Coronas? And like, oh, mm, I can't wait to get tucked into those. So let me just get a napkin and a knife and fork, right? Anyway, what yeah. usually happens is I have to hide them in the back of the fridge for, for months until hopefully she forgets about them. And I just went, oh, I need some beer. Yesterday I went, I need some beer. I'm recording the thing with Will tomorrow. I need some beer so we can have it. She went, oh, I noticed you've still got those craft beers in the back of the fridge. So, get one now. So I, so Drink I've got one. one. I, I have to. Oh, no. I have to. you got one. one. What's it like? I don't, I don't dare tell her. So it's have you called, tasted it yet? It's called What's it Miami called? Vice. Miami oh. Vice, right? Right. Well, have a it, go of it. Pink it might be a nice craft beer. Could be, could be lovely. I mean, it's a, they're all like local Florida. You can see mine's beer. a lovely light lager. Ooh, I'm so livid. <laughs> look, how, look how light and bubbly yours is. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. it's lovely, mine. Mine's lovely. There we go. Where's yours? Go on. Let me see the colour of it. Please let me black. Yours looks light. Oh, oh I could have had no. a result. Well, I guess You've done all right. right there. For a craft beer, that's not bad. Because sometimes you pour them out and it's like oil. Oh, that looks all right, <clears throat> that. You've, gone, you've, 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 had, you've had a result there. You. Pint of Castrol GTX, anyone? Oh, no. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Castrol, you need to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Cheers. Right. Cheers, pal. All the best. Bottoms up. Here we go. Go on. Have a go. It might be. It looks like that for a craft beer. Is that a nice one? It is nice. And I have to say, I do quite enjoy to go. I like I like the mystery. I like the mystery. I like going. You never know. I, like, I got yeah. this in the back of my fridge. It could be great. It, I, I could hate it, but it, it changes it up. And I have to say, I've had a bit of a result with this one. Miami it's like when you It's like when you I open like a it. box of chocolates, right? And you throw away the menu so you don't know what you're getting. Yeah, and yeah exactly. Like Russian roulette. Who can yeah. find the coffee? Yeah, or oh, the strawberry <laughs> cream. The strawberry <laughs> cream. I don't care if you're the biggest craft beer fan in the world. Sometimes you get a strawberry cream. Come on. Or oh, 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 the coffee. Do you know what I'd like to be? The person who loves coffee because you're always guaranteed a chocolate. Because always. You know, no, one, no one ever eats it. Everyone else is smashing the caramel kegs. Or oh, whatever. yeah. I, I don't think... I, do you know the, the, the long, sticky, thin ones? Is it is it a fudge that? Or is it a toffee Toffee one? finger, isn't it? Toffee finger. Yeah, this is how old I'm getting. I can't trust them now with my fillings. I can't no. trust them. Oh, mate, I was honestly around Christmas time. I have to, do you know when you get like someone who's chewy? I can't just chew it and enjoy it like I used to. I've got to threaten it for ages and just keep <laughs> squeezing it bit by bit. Because if I go in too hard, it just pulls my cap off my teeth. The amount of times I've gone, ah, mm, that's nice. Oh, pulled it out and there's my tooth on the end of it. I've had to well, go to you, dentist. You've got to, you've got to threaten it. <laughs> I've got to threaten it a bit. I've just got to squeeze it a bit, <laughs> bit by bit. On the front ones at first, just to soften it. I've got to weaken it first, then I can go with the oh, more. Because if I... I'm glad, I'm glad you meant honestly. For a split second, I thought you meant like you were squeezing it in your fist. I was like, no, you're, so, so you're, you're, sitting, you're sitting, you're sitting in front of the telly with the family and just going, "Don't mind me. I'm just squeezing <laughs> this chocolate in my hand until I can eat it." No, no, so you've gone bonkers, no. lad. 
No, mate, no. It's just I've got I've got bad teeth. Well, look, it's just I've got a couple of caps and stuff on the back, and, and you know what I'm saying. They just if you have a if you have a, one of them sweets or a, 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 like a toffee sweet, mate. The amount of times I've nearly swallowed my own cap off my mate, tooth. It might be time for you to develop that palate into the coffee cream or strawberry oh, cream. Oh God, yeah. Or the orange cream. No one's no one likes the creams. If I'm not likes... bad on the orange cream. The barrel oh, one it looks like a barrel. Not bad. Oh yeah, I said caramel keg before. That's what they used to be in Quality Street. The one that looks like a barrel. Yes, it used to be a caramel one. That's yeah, it. I didn't yeah. realise it had changed because I'm getting old as well. I've gone like a bit into it. I've gone Bleh! orange yeah. cream. Yeah. Bleh! No thanks. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. Right. So the uh, the reason why uh, we're here, well, we're going to talk about is um, we got alluded to the fact that this, I think it's this weekend. Um, yeah. What date is it? What date is it going to be? The 20- 26. Well, to- yeah. 26. To- to- talking about being old, right? This is how yeah. old we are. On the 26th of February, this Friday, this coming Friday, it's the 20th anniversary of the first episode of Two Pints being on broadcast on TV. 20 years ago. I know. Tw- unbelievable. I-, 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 I can't. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. That. It's hey, unbelievable. I've got, I've got a question. I, I, it's probably you probably don't think this because you've had kids to, to sort of measure it by. But like my twenties, I, I, my twenties were seemed like a long time. Not a long time ago. I mean, it seems like there was a full ten years of my twenties. Even though, like you know, me and you, like we'd spend a lot of it sort of going out, having a beer, this and that and the other. But maybe it was because I had two pints going on and and and, and the royal family, I guess, as well. My thirties where I sort of had more kind of like, I, I worked constantly really, but it was like a bit of a job here and a bit of a job there, nothing yeah. like constant, consistent. Mate, I don't know where my 30s went. My 20s no. seemed like a full 10 years, and my 30s were just like three months, and now, and now I'm 41. <laughs> I, I, I don't yeah. know how that happened. Were you the same, or was it different for you because you had kids? No, mate, it's, uh, yeah, no time flies, especially kids, because there's always something. There's always, you're busy all the time, and you've, you're doing yeah. things, and you, and you. The, 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 what's what's weird about when you've got kids? You see the time, you see yeah. it physically. So I can see now. It's been 16 years since you had my son because he's 16. So you're like, God, where's that gone? You yeah. know what I mean? And now this week it'd been 20 years since we did two yeah. pints since we it's started. Bonkers. So it was first time on the screen on TV. It's just it's it mind blowing. My mind. It blows my mind. I know. Um, remember because we used to remember we used, to, we used to do interviews going. Yeah, you know, it's just about like. Young twenty somethings just having fun because you know we're the sort of the youth of today and now yeah. we're just these two old dudes. <laughs> no man, no. I know man. it's well, weird. Well, I was thinking because we're talking about twenty years. Um, um, I've I've actually had a look and I just found some facts that would you know happened twenty years ago because it, you know I mean there's Harry Potter. Ha- Harry Potter. Oh, just like life. Fa- oh my! So Harry Potter. Harry is Potter. Years old. Wow. Yeah, but wow. It, Harry Potter, Philosopher's Stone, was the highest-grossing movie of that year twenty years ago. Oh, Nine hundred and seventy-eight right. million dollars. Nine hundred and seventy-eight million dollars. Harry Potter. Wow. And that was and, twenty years ago. And if you think about it, the the books would have come out even. I mean, I remember reading Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone when I was about nineteen, twenty. That's what. That's got to be twenty-one, twenty-two years ago. So what? Twenty-three. Twenty-three years ago. No. What? Mate, that's not- what, because I've I because I read a book. Fuck that. No, not for me. <laughs> well, in mum fairness, used to get me your mum used to get me Viz. And I used to just read that. That was me. To be fair, that was nothing <laughs> nothing wrong with Viz. Viz is absolutely hilarious. Um, to be fair, I was reading I was reading it with my brother at the time. He was t- he was ten yeah, years old. No, so um, it's the second the second highest grossing well, it was the highest grossing um animated film. What do you think that was twenty years ago? Shrek? Yes, Ralph! Yes! How have you got that, you yes. bastard? Yes. Well, well done, to, you. I'm just trying to picture what was sort of out in the in the, in the cinemas around about Shrek. that time. Shrek. That was that gross Wait. $484 million. Was Lord of the Rings around about that time? Yeah, well? same time, same time. That doesn't time. even seem that long ago. Lord of the Rings was the second highest grossing film to um, Harry Potter. Lord of the Rings still seems to me like, like a pretty modern film with pretty modern special effects, although admittedly I've not watched it recently. But like, mm. how's that 20 years old? I know, I know. Mad. And not only that, Orlando Bloom, it was his first ever audition, I think. Straight out of drama school, Lord of the Rings, cheers, that was easy. You know what I mean? None, none of this extra work on Cora no, like I did. No, none, none of this fussling. <laughs> no, straight out of drama school, Lord of the Rings, multi-millionaire. Thanks you very much. You didn't see Orlando Bloom in a shop, you know, <laughs> in, his, in his cut-off dungarees, giving it this like you did for your friends. <laughs> on, on, Emmerdale, trying to make, on Emmerdale trying to make himself heard. Any chance of a lift? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, uh, also, the Xbox was launched 
20 years ago. Wow. Yeah, 20 got, years ago. I got an Xbox and, um, at, you know, 20 years ago, I remember I got one and um, and I was housemates with, with our producer uh, who, who does this with us. And for a, about a week, a, time, a week and a half, maybe two weeks, I can't remember what the game was. I think it was like Abe's Odyssey or something. But it was just, I, I, I sort of never want to return to that again because he'd go off to work because he was a radio producer. And you're all right, see you later. Actually, oh, who am I kidding? I would still be asleep by the time he left for work, right? My housemate. And then he'd come back from work and I'd just be on the sofa like this, still playing this game, like with my, with my eyelids <laughs> popped open like this, stinking. No shower, pants, just for, for about two weeks. And it, I just, I, I never want to go back there again. It was what, it, it was what it must be like to, to, to be like strung out on something. I was, I've never yeah. been strung out on a game before, but when the Xbox came out, it was crazy. Yeah, How well, was that 20, 20 years, years ago? Yeah, Mind you, I'll that... say that, but wait wait till the PS5 comes out and the new Xbox. it would be the same yeah, again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. All right, this one's going to make you feel old, right? Mm -hmm. Billie Eilish was born. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. She oh. was born oh, 20 God. years. Oh, God. So while we're doing two pints for the first time, this massive recording artist was just being born. It's unbelievable. And now, there's a lad, oh, there's a lad massive. On, there's a lad on Death in Paradise who came in this year called Taj Miles, and he's he's brilliant. I mean, he's, he's, I so thought you were going to say Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure he's had that all his life, all his short life. But um, <laughs> but he's called Taj Miles, and he plays Marlon Price, and he's in the new policeman, and he's absolutely. You know, when somebody comes in, you go. This lad's got star quality. He's brilliant, <laughs> brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. He's 19 years old. And like, oh. and what's lovely about him is you don't feel like you're talking to, you know, someone who's got half what, your life like, experience. Also when we were 19. Dicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dicks. Mate, this is what I mean. When we were on two pints, we were 19. <laughs> Let's be honest. We were awful. We were no, awful. I would have I hated to. Have... I was 24. That was still you like, like I was 15. You were about 32. <laughs> You were about 32 20, when I was 21. 20 years ago, I was four, uh, 24, trust me. Mate, mate, but honestly, oh, the, no. the attitude on us and everything, we didn't think, we thought we'd just be right, but I don't know, we think we were slightly maybe products of our time as we well. I think we were overexcited was, as well. We were overexcited. Also, <clears throat> do you know what? The end, of the, the end of the 90s as well, it had just finished like lad culture and all that kind of thing. It was yeah. a big thing. And we were just, let's be fair, we were kind of dicks. I would have hate, I would have hated me at 19. I bet you would have hated you at 19. I don't know. I, at the end of the day, we were just... We were just having. Fun. I mean, do you remember we uh, when we were filming two pints in between scenes when we were recording? We'd be in my dressing room playing pro evolution soccer against each other. In the first series, in the first, series, in, in the first yeah, series when we were rehearsing, we went to the pub in between we went to the pub. scenes. <laughs> how did we think we could get away with that? And also, we'll how be were in we the pub to if you want that? us. Yeah, I, we, I, I think, wasn't like I think, we, And to be fair to any listeners, it's not like we snuck to the pub. We just went, how no, long are we going to be? Them. Oh, you're, you're going to be like 45 minutes. We'll be in the pub. We just went to the pub and it was just normal. I, I think they just wanted us out of the way because we were distracting everybody else. So if someone else, if the girls were rehearsing bit, yeah. and we was we were just pissing about and dicking about, we were just I completely know. distracting everybody. I know, I know. Uh, the girls were always so professional. So anyway, this lad, Taj Miles, he's, he's just a lovely lad and you forget because you can talk to him like, you're just talking to like, a grown ass man, which you know he's nineteen years, mm. he but you have these conversations, and he's really sort of thoughtful and intelligent, or whatever. And then you go, two pints came out before you were born. How is this even possible? It's yeah, awful, man. mate. Man, it's awful. Man. Man, I think the, the I think the one I've got um, left I was going to mention is yeah. one where you everybody remembers where they were when this happened. It was nine eleven, the twin towers. Oh, yeah. That was twenty years ago. I'll be honest, it's a lot. It's a lot less funny than I was expecting that to be. I no, it's not a funny one. Yeah, well, I'm I, just I see that now. I see that. You, you, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be good," and I was like, "This took a real left turn." <laughs> what I do remember 100 percent is I was in the bedroom and I was going out with a um, girl called uh, Lisa Rogers at the time. She was absolutely ledge, and she was like, "Ralph, you've got to come through here and look at this." And we just sat there, just. St stunned, speechless. Actually, speechless. Not just. I mean, yeah. what can you say? You can't. How do you even find any words to put the kind of? It was like you, an, what it you was see. like yeah, it was like watching a movie that wasn't a movie. It was just. Yeah. In fact, I, I, it, yeah. it, it was so, it was so unbelievable that it was sort of like a, watching a bad special effect. You know when you just go, oh, that yeah. is not real. Um, but yeah. what I, what I remember, you were living in London at the time, weren't you? I was. Uh, I was actually in Bristol. I was filming Casualty. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I remember. So what I remember about it 
and I'm sure this was ever, the experience across the, the country and, and even the world, um, for, for just weeks, even months afterwards, no, no one was no one was quite the same. Like, you had conversation, you had jokes, and you sort of did, you could go to the pub and everything, but people were just, like, quiet. Do you remember that? Do you remember yeah. the tube? Yeah. The tube, silence on the tube. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, and yeah, I, I don't it just was mean it, the usual yeah. London thing where no one wants to talk to each other, but, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. silence, and everyone was just shell-shocked. It was, like, the entirety of society was <clears> shell-shocked. <throat> Just by the yeah, it was. It was. Um, I think. I think it was literally like we. You know, it wasn't just an attack on that on America and the Twin Towers. It was like the rest of us just stopped feeling. We felt that little bit less safe. I think just like shit. Hang on. Just, just n- numb. Did you it was it? weird. Uh, it felt was, everyone yeah, felt numb, and also it was very difficult to talk about. I mean, it even is now, but it was very difficult to mm. talk about, even weeks after, like with friends or whatever, because again, like, what do you say? What do you say? You know. Just, I do remember. I do remember George W. Bush going. We're going to do everything to catch the folks that did this. And I know that he was like. I think he was Texan, um, wasn't he, George Bush? But I think. But um, I, I definitely know he was thick as pig shit. That's what well, I was thinking. I what, know. But that's what I mean. Well, I mean, you say that, but I'd have had him. I'd have had him all day long over the last five years. <laughs> well, you <laughs> don't think he could have got much worse? I know. I, mean, I know. Do, do you remember? Do you ever see Fahrenheit 9/11? Yeah. Um, it's a yeah. brilliant documentary. Yeah. And this, and when it just shows you. He just didn't. He didn't know what to do when this no. all kicked off. He was reading a book to a load of school children called yeah, Piggy Goes there. Oink, and and yeah. the, and this his, 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 his um, chief of staff come in and whisper in his ear, "We're under attack, sir. Uh, it's a terrorist attack on America." And he just sat there and continued reading Piggy Goes Oink to these kids, yeah. and then he's looking around as if to go, "What do I do now?" Waiting for someone to tell him, and then he went, "Sir, I think we need to leave." And he went. Oh, okay. And that was like, what, what are you doing, man? And then there was, and then there's another um, shot of him out on the holiday, on the golf course when all now what, is Now going, watch this drive. Yeah. He said, <laughs> yeah. he said, Merrick, what do you think about the terror? We need to stop this war on terror. Now watch this golf shot. <laughs> watch this drive. Ball. He said, yeah. Said, what's this drive? He said, what are you doing, man? I remember he said because he was from Texas. I remember he said well, he did his speech and he said made his. You know, statement. He said, "We need to do whatever we can." Something like, and then he said, "To catch the folks that did this." And yeah. I don't know why. And I understand it a bit more now because it, folks is 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 a sort of colloquialism that I guess they say down south in America, and it's not it's not yeah. as kind of it's not as uh, hokey as as it would be in England. But I found that so un, unsatisfying when he went, "The folks that did this." It's too homely <laughs> yeah. a word for the people that. Do you know what I mean? He didn't say, "We'll catch the perpetrators." Yeah. We'll catch the folks uh, that did this. I remember being really angry about that. But yeah, yeah, he's watched this drive. At the risk of being the guy who's always like, "Well, let's see both sides of things." I, I mean, I think it was grossly incompetent to to sit and carry on reading Piggy Goes Oink, and I think it just <laughs> shows that you know he was not a president. Um, really, certainly not a good president, and he and he's not whatever. He, but, he got in because of his dad, basically. Sure, but and a sort of slightly dodgy Florida vote count. But what I will say is exactly. What I will say is there's a little tiny sliver of me that like thinks to myself, it, it takes a special kind of human to be in that situation and immediately go, right, leadership. I mean, I think I, I, nothing like that had ever happened before. I mean, I guess Pearl no. Harbor was like that for America, but we were at war. No, I suppose it is a shock. It was a shock to us watching. Yeah, and, and, totally. and, and I saw, all I'm saying is I've got like a half a percent of me that thinks it must have been so shocking for him. He must have just sat there going, don't do anything, don't do anything, just keep calm or, and whatever. And carried mm-hmm. on going, what does mm-hmm. pickies go? <laughs> you know. Yeah, but well, when he got but, up and left the classroom, it was a puddle of piss. On the floor, so <laughs> yeah, it did, it did something. Piggy goes oink, Prezi goes piss piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, it no. was uh, yeah tough. And then but no, went, but that's, then... that's that's not what leaders do. I mean, as much as I've got no. that sliver of, of, of sympathy no, I know. for him, I know. If, you, if, if you're going to be if, but... if you're going to be a leader, then you've got to respond and you've got to get up. And um, it was just it was, and the, I, mean, I know it's not a, a, a really happy subject to talk about, obviously, but it is a mark in history, and it was the same year that two pints came out, and that's what we're talking about. I think it would be criminal if we don't do something. Um, for the people who supported Two Pints for the anniversary. What do you think? Yes. So so we, we're not going to say too much, are we? Uh, but we have a plan. No, we have a plan to mark, to mark the 20th anniversary of Two Pints. We are going to be talking, we have been talking to the British Comedy Guide and the creator of Two Pints, Susan Nixon, to discuss the 
20th anniversary. Just watch this space, you'll see something. Hopefully you'll like it. Um, but yeah, 20 years has flown by, um, but we're still here. We're still going strong, so I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's that. Oh, and not only are we going strong, but this is something, that, a, bit, a bit of news. What? Manscaped. Are gonna what? sponsor us for Manscaped are gonna sponsor us for the whole season. Way! Yay! Boom. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yes, I mean, and that's thanks again to you lot for buying yeah, it and getting behind yeah. it and shaving your balls. And bless you know, them. And, and it's it's not like we dropped. We, I, I, we did. They must have picked up on our subtle hints <laughs> when we kept yeah. on going. Those tight bastards have only sponsored us for <laughs> half a season. Where's the rest of the season? So they must no. have somehow picked up on that. But but, thank um, you to you lot for buying it. Without you lot supporting the show. And, and also, you know, for watching and listening and being behind us, things are happening and we, means we can keep going forward. And so thanks for that. You know, it's, you, yeah. you, uh, you're playing a part out there, people. Thank yeah. you very much. So thank you. And thank you to them for sponsoring us. And a few, so a few things to say about Manscaped. First of all, um, Will has not yet received one single elephant picture of uh, a trimmed pubic area. I don't and, want one. And no. I fear that Manscaped are going to pull their sponsorship and we won't be able to do this podcast don't anymore. You unless, dare. Please, 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 please send them. Please send them to Will. If I get one of them, send one of your bumhole shaved and primed for Ralph, please. Cut your cheeks and do a close-up just for Ralph. Even draw a couple of eyes on it and make it do a ooh face like that. Wait, <laughs> didn't you tell me a story once where you had you did a thing where you wrote a W on each bum cheek? So, so it, it said, wow. wow. <laughs> what was that for, you nutter? <laughs> Is it for your mum's birthday or something? No, it wasn't for my mum's birthday. What do you I can't I remember. Mum, look what I've got you. Drop me cakes in the middle of a restaurant. That says, wow. No. Why are you saying that? that like, what that's it was, I did. like that's not something you would do. You would. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something you would do. I did. I did. Uh, no, what it is, I, I did a comic relief strip thing where I had to strip off. There was me and a few other people. And we did it like, you know, like a full Monty thing. Mm-hmm. And then when I pulled my pants down, I had mum on my bum. I had mum written in pen, so it said, hello, mum, across my bum. So when she seen it, she'd be proud of me. <laughs> she said, I phoned her, I said, mum, did you see it? She went, yes, you had hello, mum, written on your ass. Thank you. I've <laughs> <laughs> so done it. Let's just be very, very clear. When I suggested that you might drop your pants in a restaurant and it said, wow, you were horrified by that. So instead what you did was drop your pants on national TV and it said, hello, <laughs> mum, as if that's any different or better. <laughs> That's considerably worse. I'm not parting the cheeks. So you, you need the O in the middle. You've got to part the cheeks, otherwise there's no O. Otherwise it's just... It's, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> so send Ralph one of the wow yeah. ones then. Yeah, um, thanks. Yeah. Be, send Will an Elephant, please. If you don't send Will an Elephant, we won't be able to do any more podcasts because Man's going yeah. to sponsor us. So don't so, forget, um, you can get your discount um, yeah. or with the, with the uh, Manscaped, Manscaped Ralph, can you? Yeah, manscaped.com, put in our, you get 20% off with the code two pints, uh, spelled out TW, all capitals, T-W-O-P-I-N-T-S. We've got, um, do you want to do that? So I'm going to, I'm going to do the, like the blurb, like the corporate blurb that they sent. Yeah. Because I think you'll enjoy it. And then, and then I'll get you to do like our translation of it, like, which has become essentially your catchphrase. Okay. So this is what I've got, this is what I've got to read. Right, here we go. go. You'll love this. Right. Hey, fellas. (laughs) (laughs) hey fellas we're in the thick of winter and the storms are brewing it looks like one to three inches are in the forecast when you trim that hibernation bush that's taking place in your pants luckily our partners at manscape our partners at manscape specialize in products to make sure you're walking around town with beautiful snowballs (laughs) yes Yeah. yeah but you know how when they ask us to do this they go feel free to do it in your own words that might be why yeah, yeah. Right. So the translation of that will is what you've been saying for the last couple of weeks, which is keep buying manscaped, shave your bollocks, so we still keep keep getting paid. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and moving on. <laughs> and moving on. Oh, oh, I hope you get. I so hope you get an elephant. I, I'll, I'll be no, no, no! Don't send me no elephants, please, please. So um, two pints is twenty. Have you, got, what, have you got any big memories? Any memories from I was just about two pints days? I remember, I remember you used to, we've already talked about this though, you used to rob a sausage from the canteen every t- every week for some inexplicable reason. Well, do you know that's, why? No, I'm not, queuing up for a, money. I'm not queuing up for a sausage. Man, there's a massive queue. All I wanted was a sausage. So I'll get it and eat it in the queue. Well. That was wrong with well. that. He'd get his sausage and he'd eat it like it was like a little, <laughs> it was a, like, a, like a banana. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't. I pay for the other bits, but I'd have a sausage on the way. What's wrong with that? Yeah. And, and I'll How- tell you what as well. What I liked about two pints is. As the longer we did it, the more we got to know the people, but you know who was on the props team and all that, and and we got off drinking caliber and started drinking real beer towards oh, the end of it, and Thank we were God. like, "Is it a real one?" Because we would Thank do the God. scenes in the pub, and they'd give us caliber, which rotted your guts, and you give you the worst oh, farts. It, did, yeah. it was it was horrible, <laughs> uh, and then. It, that that pub got, set was a war zone, was a <laughs> toxic nuclear zone. <laughs> but we had we had the props guy, and we give him a little wink. He goes, is, that, is, that a, is that a caliber with a wink? Mm-hmm, and yeah. they go, yeah, because obviously the, the production would go mad if we were drinking real beer. Um, but me and Ralph didn't give a shit. We'd be going, it's real this week, everyone. Cheers to the crowd. Yeah. And they go, shut up, <laughs> yeah. shut up. You're going to get us in trouble, I know. <laughs> oh, me and Ralph, we sat there. Two takes, we've had two or three pints. We were half cut by the time we was on to the fourth take. It was Do you wonderful. remember the first recording the first series though, in front of the studio audience? Studio audience the first episode. Oh, God. I remember I, I, it so well. Well, I, I might have this wrong, but I don't remember anyone laughing. No, at because all they were all about episode. 85. They thought yes, they were joining a queue to go and watch that, Parky or something. They'd they gone yeah. in, what's this new show? We're going to see Albert. Oh, we'll go. It's a comedy, is it? We'll go in this queue. Maureen, do you like that? Well, Albert, <laughs> you, you, you like two pints, don't you? And you always eat crisps. It's probably for us. <laughs> No, you you could hear them knitting and stuff and boiled sweets, whacking off fillings. And, and, and literally, <laughs> we would finish a scene and it was like, Tumbleweed. Oh and we were like, this is oh, shit. What's happened? Know, we, just, we just had to find our audience. Which what were... was weird was, like, we thought it was funny. Like, we were doing the, the rehearsals. We thought it was really funny. And then we'd get to the recording it and it'd just be dead. It's like a ghost town. It's hard. That must have been awful so for hard. Susan, actually. Susan must have been like, Jesus, I hope this goes all right. Because she was like, what, 18 when she, when she created yeah, but it? Younger? That's the thing is, she wrote it for the audience that didn't know it was there. So once it, once it found its audience, it was great. It just had to find it. And we were we were young, so we loved it. And we were saying things that no one else was saying. You were like, we can't say that. And it was like, we can't, it's in the script. So it was what's just funny, great. What's funny is, <clears throat> you know how, like we've said before, we've talked um, before about how the critics didn't like it, but um, I was talking to my missus, who's a, who's a writer. You know, she's yeah. American. She's, she's a writer, a very successful writer. And I was talking to her about some of the two-pound stuff. I showed her some clips. In fact, I showed her the, I showed her the clip of Gaz wanking himself thin. <laughs> Oh, right. that's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, well, she was all right. She, she's not like twelve, <laughs> so it's fine. No, so the mum and dad wasn't in the room at the time. No, but they'd be fine. They'd be fine. Right. I'm sure. Right. So I showed her the clip of, clip of Gaz wanking himself thin, and she was laughing, going, "I, I cannot," but because there's nothing like that in America. Nothing like that on American no, TV. It you wouldn't translate out there. No. Cause... So she's, but she was crying, laughing, going, "I cannot believe what I'm watching." So she said, who is this girl? Is that Was that written by Susan or was that written by like one of the writing room? <clears throat> I said it was written by Susan. There was no writing room, certainly not till the later series. No, later ma- stages. Ma- yeah, Daniel But Pete even, but in, even then, was. a couple of people came in and sort of did a couple of episodes here and there. But the fact is, yeah. Susan still, I think Susan ended up writing something like 60 odd episodes all on her own and then was, yeah. had, you know, was really hands on for the others. And Lindsay, my missus, was saying that because I told her about how the critics weren't like very supportive at the time and she said in America if a girl an 18 year old girl came up with a series and wrote it all on her own and wrote 60 episodes of a successful series she would be treated like a deity she'd be treated like a goddess like mm. like p- the American media public everyone would be going there's this absolute genius who created this yeah. popular show and she'd be so they'd be throwing awards at her throwing yeah, yeah. money at her and everything and it's it's a shame that because I mean look Susan's had a great career and she's very well liked and everything but like did she ever really get particularly that like, critical recognition for all the unbelievable effort she put in I don't think so I, th- I think it's like it's that just for a different a lot. society you, well it's a it's you a can't different compare world. I mean we've said this before but could you imagine being in an American sitcom as successful as that for ten years how mate, much you would mate two I do the Royal Family followed by two pints. And if I was in America, I'd be worth about $100 million. As That's it is, I'm worth about $100. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's it's just a different world. It's just, it's weird, you know. But, you know, it's, um, I, I mean, I've just got some of the fondest memories. They were the best times because we oh, just, yeah. we were friends. We, we went to work, uh, which was, the hours were like 10 o'clock till 3. Dead easy. <laughs> and we did a live <laughs> audience and I went out and got drunk at the weekend. It was just, and then not only that, 
when we were doing it, we was having such a laugh. I remember doing a scene with um, Sheridan where she had to be looking at Gaz had piles and he didn't know how to tell Johnny and Johnny thought he had cancer and he said, it's coming out my ass. And then he realised it was piles. <laughs> oh, yeah. And and she had to she had these glasses on. I was bent Locked over a couch. Up behind. Yeah, and <laughs> Janet was looking through my ass. And in and, and in one of the takes, she found one of my wife's hairs in my ass crack. It's because my, my wife has all these wigs what, and stuff. What what was you, what had your wife been doing? I don't know. Not any I mean, of my I, ass. Anyway. I can I, I can hazard a guess. No, but I'm telling you now, hair that hair off these wigs and weaves, it gets everywhere. I found them, I found them in the crack of my ass, around my balls, and me. They get everywhere just because they just do. And I, and she pulled out. She went, "Whose is this?" <laughs> Halfway through the scene, she pulled out this like half a meter long hair <laughs> out of my ass crack. <laughs> I, <remember. laughs> I think it's in one of the outtakes, and the audience just creased, and we were howling, laughing. I mean. One of the best outtakes, obviously, one of the worst because it took so long was obviously when I had to do the, um, oh, the noise. Or- orgasm out. impression. Oh, it's obviously you I didn't know I was going to do it like that. But I had oh no idea. God. It was one of the but, funniest. But there was, there was loads of, that's the one everyone talks about, but there was loads of times when we had to step out because we couldn't stop laughing. That oh, was basically what we did. Like the, the, the record on the Friday night was just basically us just laughing and then occasionally getting one of our lines right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't no, know how was... we ever got through it. I think that's I what it. people enjoy coming to see. They come in to see the show being recorded, but the outtakes, it just was, yeah. uh, it overtook. I mean, we did, yeah, you can still get them, like the outtakes, uh, on, they were out on DVDs. You remember, they brought them out as a series, mm. an outtake series, yeah. which were great. Um, so, yeah, if you still want to go out and have a look at them, you know what I mean, cheer you up, have a bit of a laugh. Yeah. They're out there to find. We've gone right off piece again. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, okay. go on, hold on. So, wait a second. We've got some more two bites things since it's the 20th anniversary. What? Oh, what? Well, I'm just trying to sort of think about other things I remember. Like, um, we had um, we had loads of interviews with press before it came out because they were all really excited because they put together a young cast that was that was quite sort of. I mean, me and me, you and Natalie were quite well known um, oh. from from various things we'd done. And what's funny is like Sheridan was pretty much an un- no, she wasn't unknown because she no, done and Royal you'd already, you'd already recruit, recorded Royal Family because she, right, yes. she had the braids. She had the in when I met. That's her. right. Yeah. So so we'd done the Royal Family, but like so her, but her Sheridan and Catherine, which seems insane now to think, but Sheridan and Catherine were sort of the least well known. Excuse me. And then there was Natalie. Jesus, that Miami Vice. Um, and then there was uh, Natalie and, and and you and me. So. It was sort of quite, there was an interest in us and we we were able to get quite a lot of press before it went out. And yeah. all these interviews and reviewers were like, so tell me about it. Oh, brilliant. You know, tell me. well, yeah, it's just, you know, and everyone, do you remember everyone was going, is this the British Friends? And we were like, no, no it's not the British it's, No, it's, it's I mean, far from that. And no, it was so difficult to persuade everyone because all they wanted to write about was, it was the British Friends. And I was like, trust me, it's no, a very it's different not. vibe. It's not. Um, and then, so they were all like, great. And then they were all writing about it going, this is going to be great. And then every one of them went, at the end, they went, well, this isn't very good. <laughs> no. The, oh, cheers. Yeah, well, that's what we, I think that's what all this is about, is the success of Two Pints, as we know, came Just from. Just because of the fans. They, they supported the fans. it, supported it, and supported it, and got behind it. And then the press exactly. suddenly turned a corner. Once it started to, once the show finished, they were like, oh, bring this back. It's like, yeah. you didn't like it for the first five years. You slagged yeah. it off. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to bring it back. Just because it was ahead of its time. It managed to survive in spite of them rather than exactly. because of them. Which is, yeah. which is a show of real success and support, which is why we are raising a glass to 20 years of two pints this week. And we're going to, uh, we're going to do something for you. Uh, so hopefully you'll like it. Um, watch this space. You'll see it this weekend. Yeah. And I think because we're doing something later on in the week, we, will we can probably it, wrap yeah. this up. We yeah. And we can, up. yeah. Just a little short one today. Yeah, but just nice to talk to you. And also, um, yeah, just to think about the old days. They were the best times. Um, and um, yeah, and it's good that look, me and you are still here doing this and talking mm-hmm. about it. And yeah, and people um, are listening, which is insane. Bless them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and great um, great feedback, um, uh, as I say, from the last podcast that went out. There's been a bit of attention about Joe Trasini. So, and, and I was just going to say, stuff. yeah, did you I'm see? Really uh, good for he, that, yeah. He tweeted at us, Joe, um, saying thanks for the mention. But um, And both of us sent a message back to yeah. him but just you know keep um, supporting to, him to, yeah keep supporting him um, if, if he's listening then Joe you're great and if anyone likes what he does then make sure you let him know and support him and just follow his example talking about yes. it is, um, is really, and what we really didn't important. say 
last time is uh, if anyone else is struggling out there with mental health, um, it is good to talk and it's okay not to be okay. And the Kaleidoscope Plus group are out there, uh, the charity that I'm an ambassador for, um, and they have a 24 hour suicide helpline. We can be faceless, um, it can be nameless. Um, you will speak to a professional, there's a contact line out there. So if you need any help, there's people out there willing to help. So um, mm-hmm. don't suffer in silence, people. Okay, and that's it. It is, except you've just reminded me of something that I want to run by you. What now? <laughs> you've just reminded me. So, <clears throat> so <clears throat> you get where? Where what? is it? Let me find it. What you get you because that that whole, that whole um, lovely exchange with um, with Joe. Yeah. There's a headline in the papers. Yeah. And a picture of Joe, and a picture of you. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was says, in the Metro or something, yeah. Coronation Street star Will Meller disgusted... <laughs> I'm, not by... I'm not even on screen yet, but I'm a star. You're not even on screen, by the way. <laughs> this is this is our podcast that we do together. We talked <laughs> about Joe, right? That's Coronation Street way. star Will Meller disgusted mm. by trolls targeting Joe Trussini with suicide comments. That's right. Amy. Absolutely fair. Coronation Street star Will Meller has spoken about blah, blah, blah. Will who's been cast as drug lord Harvey in the Soap, spoke on his and Ralph Little's podcast. Oh, okay, right, right. Whatever. I'm great. I'm, I'm delighted that you were recognised for, you know... Well, we um, both recognised. You're mentioning it as well. You've got a comment in there as well, talking about yes. you and what you said to yeah, Joe and all yeah. that stuff. My, my, my point is the headline, right? The, right, the headline. Yes. Yeah. That's the headlines you get. The headlines right. I get off last week's podcast are Ralph Little issued warning by fiancé after she brands his romantic proposal ridiculous. <laughs> How does that work? How yeah. are you? How are you? Will Miller, brand, Will Miller looks out for fellow actor and wor- looks out for, her, for her fellow man's mental health. By the way, Ralph Little was also doing a podcast, and I get <laughs> there's, there's no mention of there's no mention of Will Miller's proposal was was cheap as shit because he didn't spend a penny on it. No mention of that. No, it said it's me. Ridiculous. But Ralph Little nearly kills girlfriend in helicopter crash. <laughs> oh, I read the article. I read the article. They never even mention that I was flying the helicopter. They just say I took her on a ride. The whole point of the of the day was that it was just me and her. I learned, Will, to fly a helicopter to yeah. be able to propose to her. No mention of that. No, just no. a ridiculous proposal. And you're Mr. Uh, Caring and Lovely. Yes. Well... How does that work? I don't know, but I quite like it. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. Oh, right, uh, nice one, pal. Uh, oh, that's very go. good. Very funny. Yeah, right, well, it was just a short one today. Well. Just to have a little bit of a chat. Say thanks for all. 20 years of two pints. Watch this space, because me and Ralph are going to do something to celebrate it. Yes, we are. So, so Friday, Friday the 26th. Yeah, keep your eye Tell out, um, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll let you know um, when it's coming out. And uh, hopefully you like it. Take care, everyone out there. Stay safe. Right. I'm off. I'm off to play I'll tennis. See you soon. Goodbye. Are you going to play tennis? Yeah. Enjoy. I'm already Take care, it. everyone. Bye. See you <laughs> later. <laughs>